Just got a good thumbnail, don't worry. So today's the day I have all of my uh, children here in this little basket. So this is the season six of 15 Days of Foundation wrap up video. So this is where I'm gonna be ranking all of the foundations one to 15 so you can find out my favorites and least favorites after I have tested them for longer and tried them in different ways. 15 Days of Foundation is a part of a charity campaign called Beauty Wishes 2019 that I co-created with Project Beauty Share. So I'm gonna be announcing the total amount that you guys raised for season six. Also announcing the winning shelter and city and all of the meetup details. So I'm gonna start with all of the Beauty Wishes stuff and then we're gonna get into the foundations. So if you're excited for this video and you enjoyed season six of 15 Days of Foundation, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I appreciate it. So our goal this year was to raise $25,000. You guys friggin' knocked it out of the park and we raised $38,798.06. $38,798. $38,000, you guys. That is insane. We went over 10K past our goal. So I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who supported by buying merch, by donating through the site. The average donation was $7.50. So that just goes to show that every single dollar does make a difference, whether it's a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars, whatever you can adds up in combination with thousands of other people and it does really help. So whether it's for Project Beauty Share and Beauty Wishes or any other cause that you wanna support, just know that a dollar really does do something. So major props to you guys. I'm super proud of the Bay Rito family. And next year, are we gonna do 50,000, 60,000? I don't know, comment down below what you think we should try and raise next year. So there were five different shelters across the US involved in a voting competition. So the winning shelter in Winning City is Hearth in Pittsburgh. Congratulations to Hearth, they won $10,000. What's super exciting is that because of the amount that you guys raised and that we totally past what we thought we could raise, we were actually able to give $2,500 to each of the other four shelters involved. The meetup is gonna be on Saturday, April 13th from one o'clock to three o'clock p.m. It's in the freestanding Sephora store in Ross Park Mall. So huge thank you to Sephora for hosting us. It is inside the mall. It's not the Sephora inside the JCPenney. It's the actual Sephora store. So I'm gonna have all of the info down below in the description box, but I cannot wait to come to Pittsburgh and meet you guys. Uh, please show up. Please come. I can't wait to hug you. Myself and the Project Be Share team will be in Pittsburgh, so I hope you guys can make it on Saturday, April 13th. So each shelter is going to receive $2,500, Hearth is going to receive $10,000, and they all received thousands of products from all of the brands involved. So again, I just wanted to give a shout out to the brands who participated in Beauty Wishes 2019 who donated product. Just thank you again to ColourPop, CYO, L'Oreal, Maybelline, Morphe, Native, Sigma, and Wet n Wild. Thank you guys so much for participating. I really appreciate those brand support and I know the shelters were super excited to receive all of the product. I'm gonna pop some photos in here. So I think that's all of the beauty wishes info I have for you guys. Pittsburgh, I can't wait to meet ya. Again, all the meetup info is down below in the description box. Let's get in to ranking the foundations. So the purpose of this ranking is obviously to tell you kind of where I stand with each of them, but also I started filming this series the beginning of January. It is now the middle of March. So I've had about two months to test these foundations in different ways try them again on their own, mix them with different foundations, with different primers, setting sprays, whatever it is, just try and find a way to make these foundations work best for my skin and give you kind of my final thoughts on them. With that being said, I haven't been very um, functional the last couple months with health stuff, so I've probably tested these foundations closer to about a month, I would say, but I do feel confident on where I stand with all of them and I felt ready to tell you guys kind of like my final thoughts. So let's get into it. I'm gonna have all the foundations with their reviews listed down below in the description box. And like usual, I kind of like chunk them out into ones that I really like and recommend, ones that are like okay, and then just ones that I don't recommend at all. So I will tell you where those kind of like lines are as we get going. So number one foundation, you guys can probably all guess if you watched the series, is the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Foundation. This one, just can do no wrong. This is like one of those rare, rare foundations for me where 
I don't feel like I need to do a whole lot to it. It works for my skin on its own. It looks beautiful. It wears well throughout the day. It has great coverage. It doesn't crease horribly on me. If you're new here, I have dry skin for years. I had cystic acne and oily skin, so I have a, a fairly good idea about how foundations perform on my skin, how they might look on other skin types because I've had both after going on Accutane. Wow, I just explained that not well. So when I'm talking about these foundations, it's compared to like hundreds of other foundations that I've tried on my skin because I know what good foundations can look like on my skin. So I have kind of like a benchmark there. This foundation is one of those that I just feel like it looks beautiful on its own. I do think this is one of those foundations that could wear well on oily skin because it's one of those that just seems to stay put. Beautiful finish, beautiful coverage from the drugstore, affordable, can't say anything bad about this one. If you tried this out, let me know what you think of this one down below. Okay, so number two actually kind of surprised me that it was this high because this one majorly grew on me as I tried it out more. I do have a couple small issues with it, but overall I think it's a beautiful foundation that a lot of people will love. This is the Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. So my main thing with this is that it oxidizes a crap ton. The shade 1C0, which is this one, is too dark to begin with, but then it also oxidizes on my skin. Definitely room for improvement on the shade range. But the formula of this is so unique. It looks like skin. It feels super lightweight. It's glowy and it's natural, but it has coverage. And it's one of those foundations that is just so comfortable to wear. It doesn't look like you're wearing tons of makeup. If you like glowy skin with, I would say like medium to full coverage, I do think you can build this one up you might really like this foundation. Because of the shade, I have to mix it. It does look way too dark, so unless I have on like tanner or something, then I won't need to mix it, but for just like everyday use, I've been mixing it with my CYO or another foundation to lighten it. I did try mixing it with the L'Oreal in the shade 400 since this one's a little bit light. All right, so number three is the foundation that I'm wearing right now, and since this was day 15, I had the least amount of time to try this one out, but after that 15th day, this is the one that I wanted to reach for the most, I would say, out of all of these, just because I was so determined to find a way to make this work. I should say what it is. This is the Tarte Double Duty Beauty Face Tape Foundation. So the shade that I tried in the video was off for me. So my correct shade is 16 Fair Light Neutral. It's what I'm wearing right now. It's a pretty close shade match. This one, I do need to do things to it to make it look good on my skin to make it look like the best. It looks good on its own, but I would say to make it look like even more flawless, I definitely have to do a few things. So far, my favorite way to apply this has been using the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer underneath with my usual glowy La Roche-Posay moisturizer. And then I will apply this with a brush or a sponge. I feel like the thing I really like about this is that it is so quick, so easy to apply. It's one of the foundations I've been throwing in my like overnight bag because it's just easy to apply. Like I can just throw it on with a sponge in the morning. I feel like I get full coverage. I don't need to do a whole lot to it. I don't need to address the shade at all and it looks good. The setting spray is crucial for me on this one. It works really well with my Catrice Dewy Glow, but I love it with the MAC Fix Plus. This is how I'm wearing it right now. I just feel like it makes it look a lot more skin-like. This one can look I don't want to say cakey. It can just look a tad makeup-y. Like, if you have creasing issues, I do still crease with this one. This one isn't going to be, like, super smoothing over texture or creasing, but there's something about it that I still really like it. Like, I love the coverage. It does last well on my skin throughout the day, and I just feel like this is one of those kind of, like, no-fuss foundations. So if you're someone who likes full coverage, I would say it's more of a satin, satin matte finish. I don't find it to be super mattifying, like especially with the setting spray. I mean, it looks pretty glowy if you add a setting spray on top. If you have dry skin, it feels really comfortable. It feels hydrating and moisturizing throughout the day. Also, I should add that the L'Oreal really picks up whatever moisturizer you have underneath. So if you want more of a matte face, use a matte moisturizer. If you want glowy skin, if you want more of like a satin finish, use a glowy moisturizer underneath because it does really come through. By the way, I'm not giving you like the full specs or anything of these foundations because I have full dedicated reviews on each one. So if you want to know like the details about each one, I'll leave those review videos down below and you can go watch them. Okay, so here is one of those lines I was talking about. Those three foundations are like the good ones, my top foundations out of all 15. These next ones are the ones that we'll just get into it. Number four was very, very 
very confusing for me. This is the Hourglass Vanish Seamless, seam, wow, seamless Liquid Foundation. And so I did have to order a different shade and the shade Cream is what I ordered and that is a pretty close shade match for me. I tried this so many different times in so many different ways and had a different experience every single time to like extremes. So I do feel like this is one of those foundations that is super dependent on your moisturizer, your primer, your setting spray. It basically morphs in either a good way or a bad way depending on what you use with it. So I had a total horror foundation experience when I tried this one day. I was getting ready at my parents hotel when they were in town to go out to dinner. We were like rushing around. I just went in with my wet black beauty blender and I used whatever travel moisturizer was in my travel bag and I think it was the Purity Philosophy Cleanser, not cleanser, moisturizer. And it's like a super lightweight moisturizer, you know, shouldn't have any major issues. Went in with this one and it would not stick to my face. It looked horrible. It looked super patchy. It was just like not wanting to stick to my face. Like I said, I tried this so many times in different ways and sometimes it looked great for the first like six hours and then it would start to look kind of cakey and sometimes it looked horrible. So if you have this foundation or you're debating getting it, just know that it is very finicky and you'll probably have to try and use different products to make it look good on your skin. It's just really going to depend on your skin and the products you're using. So it's hard for me to give this like a total go, even though I do love the coverage. I love how lightweight it is. This is pretty opaque full coverage. If you have acne, I do think this one would cover it, but over texture, it doesn't look the best throughout the day. So not sure how this one would do on acne. I have a feeling it would look pretty cakey throughout the day. But again, you might be able to find a way to make it work. I had probably a handful of different combos that worked with this one, whether it was with the L'Oreal foundation or with CYO. CYO was like my go-to mixing one when I try these foundations. But this one did rank this high because I want to reach for it still over all the other foundations I'm about to mention. And I do like it enough to where I like how it looks when it's on my face. It's just finicky. That was a very long explanation, I feel like. But... That's why it's number four. So number five is the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation. My main issue with this one is that it oxidizes a crap ton. It looks like the shade is gonna be great when it first goes on and then it turns straight up orange and it also breaks me out. I did nail it down. This one does break me out. Dior foundations typically do. I should probably just stop trying them at this point because there's something in them, whether it's an ingredient or the fragrance, whatever it is, Every single Dior foundation I've ever tried breaks me out. But those two things aside, this one looks pretty similar to me to the Laura Mercier one. This one is just definitely like a few steps ahead. So if you're debating between these two, they give a similar kind of finish and glowy effect and everything. This one just overall looks much nicer and it feels a little bit more lightweight on the skin. If you find that Dior ones usually work well for your skin, maybe get a sample of both from Sephora and see which one you like better. But I definitely would reach for this one a thousand percent over the Dior one. So next up is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Stick Foundation. So this one to me ranked number six, right? We're number six? Yep, number six, because it was just very, very average to me. I don't not like this one. It doesn't look bad on my skin. It just doesn't have the best lasting power for me. And it just doesn't make me want to reach for it again. I love the Wet n Wild Cushion Foundation. That one looks beautiful on my skin. This one is a satin finish. You can get pretty good coverage. I like the coverage. This one for me was just one that would work the best if I was applying it like to get ready to go out to dinner or something where I didn't need it to last a full day. If you have 10 bucks to spend on a foundation, I just would skip this one and go with either the L'Oreal, CYO, or Joa. Those are like some of my top drugstore ones. All right, number seven is the Il Maquillage Woke Up Like This. The more I tried this, the more it reminds me of the Maybelline Fit Me Dewy and Smooth Foundation, not the Matte and Poreless, the Dewy and Smooth. This one just feels like so slidey and like velvety, not necessarily in a bad way. If you like the Maybelline Dewy and Smooth, you might really like this one. It is very natural looking. I would say like medium coverage. I just find it to be, again, like there's not one thing that I like about it enough to where it makes me want to mix it with other foundations or wear it again on its own. So I did try this mixed with stuff and again, it was just pretty average. Usually when I mix foundations, like if I'm trying to find a killer combo, it's two foundations that I really like, but that one has something that the other one doesn't. So maybe one has full coverage and it's really dewy and one is matte and it has like amazing lasting power and it doesn't crease like this one. Those are two that I would combine to get like the perfect foundation. 
This one just doesn't have enough things in it that I really look for in a foundation to make it worth it for me. Also, it's pretty expensive. Between this and the Maybelline, I would say just go with the Maybelline. It's way cheaper and you get a similar effect. All right, so number eight and number nine are actually pretty similar, but number eight is the Natasha Denona Face Glow Foundation. This is one of those that looks nice on the skin for the first half of the day, but it feels horrible. I really don't like the way this one feels on my skin. It is super thick, it's sticky. I just, it's not for me. Usually I don't mind a tacky finish, but not when it's super thick and I can just like feel it on my face throughout the day. I'm just not a fan of the texture of this one at all. I also think this one did break me out. So I kind of stopped using it once I realized that, but I tried this probably like two or three times after filming that first video. So I did try it a few times. I just wasn't wowed anytime and it did still like make my face super sticky no matter what I mixed it with. The tackiness did kind of come through and it still felt super thick. If you're looking for something along these lines, instead, I would say go with the Cosmetic CC Illumination or the Lancome Renergy Lift Foundation. Both of these are super pretty, glowy, natural. This one has more coverage. This one is definitely more light coverage, but you can build it up. So both of these, I would say definitely go with over the face glow. All right, so here's where the cutoff kind of is, where now they get even shittier. But like I said, number nine is pretty similar to number eight. So number nine is the Cover FX Natural Finish Foundation. I wanted to like this one so bad. Just by the description and everything, I thought I was really gonna be into this one. Their claims say it's supposed to be lightweight, skin-like, and have a soft focus finish. It is literally the opposite of all of those things. This one is super thick, super sticky, again, like the Natasha Nona one, but I would say this one is even thicker. This is like hard to blend out. It literally feels like you're blending out like glue on your face. It is so thick. This one also really creases on me, probably because of how thick it is. Save your money. If you want a good Cover FX foundation, get the Cover FX Custom Cover Drops. Those are awesome to mix in with anything. They add coverage, have a really pretty finish, and they're just awesome to like adjust other foundations with. All right, so number 10 is the Becca Ultimate Coverage Foundation. So the only thing, the only thing I like about this one is the coverage. That's the only reason why I would, again, try and mix it to make it work. I have found a couple things that I don't mind how it looks mixed in with it. It's just not long lasting on my skin. This one looks good for the first couple hours and then by the end of the night, it just looks like a hot mess. It looks super dry, super cakey, super makeup-y. This one will probably wear totally different on oily skin, but for dry skin, this is a major no for me. Basically, same exact situation with number 11. This is the Sephora Matte Perfection Foundation. Again, I really like the coverage, but everything else about it was a thumbs down. There are foundations that are full coverage that don't look like that. I have a whole video on extreme full coverage foundations. So if you have acne or if you just like super opaque full coverage foundations, I'll leave that video in the eye and down below. I do also wanna do kind of an updated video on matte foundations for dry skin that work because there are some that work and there are some that don't look cakey and horrible. Number 12 is the Milani, this is not the Milani, that's the Wet Wild, the Milani Conceal and Perfect Foundation Stick. This one, ooh, not a fan. Not a fan of the coverage, not a fan of the finish. It looks oily after like a few hours on my skin, which is very odd because it's supposed to be oil controlling. I don't get oily throughout the skin, throughout the skin, throughout the day. My skin is still pretty normal to dry, more on the dry side than anything. When I look oily throughout the day, I know it's the foundation because oil doesn't really like come through my skin at all. I can't even imagine how this would look on oily skin. Again, just save your money, not worth it. So number 13 is the Morphe Fluidity Foundation. I also have been trying the concealer more and the concealer is a major thumbs down. It looks horrible on my under eyes. This one, same kind of thing as the Sephora. It just doesn't work on my skin. It just looks too cakey and stuff. If you have oily skin, it might look totally different, but I also just didn't find that this was full coverage. I don't know. Some people are saying it's like the opaque kind of coverage. On my skin, I could still see freckles coming through. So for me, it didn't look like full coverage. So between that and the finish of it, just didn't work for me. I can't even find number 14. Did I already donate it? Okay, number 14 is on the loose, but I do have the box. This is the Ulta Youthful Glow Foundation Serum Drops. Oh, I think I put it in my rejects pile. Anyways, this foundation's horrible, don't buy it. Youthful Glow Serum Drops. There's nothing youthful, glowy, or serum-like about this foundation. It is literally like a dry, matte, patchy, 
very thin liquid that turns your skin like a desert. I just feel like there's something off with the formula of this. I was watching back that video and I feel like you couldn't even tell in the video how bad it was. It was pretty bad. It's one of those foundations that you just, on my skin, I could not make it work and I couldn't work with it at all. Usually I can find ways, whether it's like adding a powder or setting spray or something to make it look better. This is one of those that it's just like, there's something a little off with the formula. I like the Ulta, what was that one called? The HD Full Coverage Foundation, I think that's what it is. I think they actually discontinued that though because I went to link it in another video and I'm pretty sure it's discontinued. All right, we are on to number 15, the Cream Shop Match Made Luminous Liquid Foundation. Wow, that is all I gotta say about this one truly shocking how horrible this one is. So I am very confused because regarding the whole ounce debate thing in the comments that were happening on that video, my bottle says 0.28 ounces of product right here. So online it says something totally different and then on some websites it says 1.06 ounces of product. I don't know you guys, unless I just got like a total misprinted label right on the bottom of here, it says 0.28 ounces of product. So if that is the case, what I'm thinking is that it's just a super thick glass bottle because some of you are saying it looks like a full fluid ounce. A lot of packaging can look like a fluid ounce but be totally deceiving. I think they just have a super freaking thick glass bottle here to make it look like a fluid ounce. If that is the case, this is just absurdly priced and it is <laughs> horrid. If this was free, I wouldn't tell you guys to put it on your face. It's that bad. You guys saw it in that video, but it basically disappears on your face like it evaporates. I've never had that happen with the foundation to that degree where it looks like you're going to have full coverage and then it just goes away. I don't know where it goes. I don't know what kind of magic that is, but like redness starts coming through. It looks patchy. It looks super dry. It doesn't blend. It dries super fast, so you definitely have to work in sections with it but it just does not blend. It feels like, again, you're trying to like blend out glue. So this one is just a hard pass. So those are all 15 foundations. Again, I'll have all of them linked down below along with the review videos right below. So if you wanna go back and learn more about any of them, you can. But I hope you guys enjoyed season six of 15 Days of Foundation. I can't wait to meet some of you guys at the meetup in Pittsburgh on Saturday, April 13th. All of the info is down below. Again, thank you to all of the shelters, brands, Project Beauty Share, everyone involved who helped out and made Beauty Wishes 2019 happen. All of you guys who donated, we so appreciate the support and involvement and just everything. So thank you guys. This week there's actually four videos out. So if you missed yesterday's bonus vlog, I will put that in the eye and down below. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video.